The Power Tool Institute is committed to promoting the safe and proper operation of power tools. PTI has produced a series of videos on the safe operation of electric and cordless power tools. This video focuses on corded and cordless benchtop and contractor table saws manufactured in accordance with the applicable UL standard. Table saws meeting the requirements of UL standards are widely available from PTI members. This video does not cover industrial table saws or older table saws, which may have a different guarding system that may comply with a previous standard. Please review PTI's earlier table saw safety video, which focuses on safety information for older table saws. We'll show you the basics of what you need to know about safely operating electric and cordless table saws. We also recommend watching another safety video from the Power Tool Institute, Power Tool Safety, It's In Your Hands, for information on general power tool safety, including personal protective equipment. Well, let's get started. First, this video is not meant to replace the information and advice contained in the instruction manual of your tool. Be sure you completely read and understand the instruction manual and any warning labels before using your saw. The instruction manual is also the first place to look if you have any questions. You may be wondering, what is a table saw? Well, a table saw is a power tool that has a spinning saw blade that projects through a slot in a table, which supports and positions the workpiece. A table saw can either be set on a table or may come with its own support stand or legs. Table saws are often used to cut materials, typically wood or plastic, where the user places the work on top of the table and feeds it toward the saw blade. Now let's walk around a table saw to get familiar with some important parts. Starting with the blade guard assembly, there are three main components of this system the guard itself, the riving knife, and the anti-kickback device. Each form an important part of the safety system of your table saw and should always be used in accordance with the table saw manufacturer's instructions. The blade guard is a device mounted above the table that allows the workpiece to pass beneath it during a cut. The guard covers the portion of the blade not in contact with the workpiece and is designed to minimize accidental blade contact by the user. Always use the blade guard for every cutting operation where the blade will fully cut through the workpiece. When installing the blade guard, ensure the upper barrier is parallel to the tabletop. Next we have the riving knife. The riving knife helps reduce kickback by preventing the workpiece from pinching against the back of the blade. The riving knife is mounted behind the blade and acts as a barrier between the cut piece and the rest of the workpiece. Table saw guards and riving knives should always be used, mounted and adjusted according to manufacturer's instructions. This component is known as an anti-kickback device. It allows the movement of the workpiece in the cutting direction, but reduces the likelihood of the rapid movement of the workpiece in the opposite direction, which may occur during a kickback. We will talk more about avoiding kickback later in the video. Now let's have a look at this device, which is called a rip fence, or just fence. The fence is a sort of straight edge that mounts to the top of the table and runs parallel with the blade. The fence helps the operator keep the workpiece straight during a rip cut, which helps minimize kickback. It can also be moved toward or away from the blade to adjust the width of the cut. That brings us to another kind of cutting fence. This one is called a cross-cutting fence or miter gauge. Like the rip fence, the cross-cutting fence keeps the workpiece straight during a cut, which helps minimize kickback. However, this fence allows the workpiece to sit against it and be pushed toward the saw blade. When using a cross-cutting fence, the user should not also use a rip fence. There are also a few adjustments that can be made to position the saw blade for specific cuts. The height adjustment allows the user to raise or lower the saw blade to set the height of the blade's tooth tip above the tabletop. The bevel adjustment is used to set the bevel angle, which is the amount of tilt the blade has relative to the workpiece. For perspective, when a blade is straight up and down, that would be a bevel angle of zero degrees. Most table saws have the ability to adjust the bevel angle within a specific set of angles. You may be wondering what this area of the saw is called. Well, this is a dust chute, and it is used to help direct sawdust away from the user during a cut. It can also be used to connect a dust extractor or vacuum system to the table saw to move the sawdust to a collection device for later disposal. 
While we mentioned PPE in our general safety video, it is important to remember to avoid loose-fitting clothes or dangling objects like necklaces. Long hair should be tied back and long sleeves rolled up or above the elbow. There are some general procedures you should always follow. Use common sense. Avoid misuse and or incorrect operating procedures or conditions. Accidents and kickback can be avoided by the following. Never hold and press the workpiece that is being cut off against the side of the rotating saw blade. Keep saw blades clean and sharp. Do not try to cut large sheets that you cannot guide with the fence or miter gauge. Keep in mind that long or wide workpieces need extra support, such as an auxiliary table or roller stand. This will keep the workpiece from tipping during the cutting operation. Never try to cut more than one workpiece at a time. Stacked workpieces can shift or bind on the blade, leading to unexpected contact with the blade and possible kickback. When cutting, always stand to one side and never directly in line with the blade. Never position your hands or fingers in the path of the saw blade. You could slip into the blade if you apply uneven or excessive force, or if there are any irregularities in the workpiece. Never pull the stock from the rear of the saw to finish the cut. Review the instruction manual for further information. Let's take a minute to discuss kickback. When using a table saw, care should be taken to avoid kickback, which is a sudden and possibly violent reaction of the workpiece, which is most often caused when the workpiece is pinched, jammed, or misaligned with the saw blade. Kickback can cause serious harm, having enough force to drive the workpiece through drywall or anything else in its path. By following some simple procedures and setups, kickback and possible injuries can be avoided. During a kickback, the workpiece can be propelled away from the saw blade toward the user, which can cause injury or damage to the workpiece. Kickback can be avoided by using the proper safety devices and following proper cutting techniques, which can be found in the table saw's instruction manual. Kickback most often is the result of operator inattention and misuse of the table saw. The major causes of kickback are improper alignment of the fence to blade, improper support of the workpiece, a twisted or warped workpiece, a dull or damaged blade, overly aggressive workpiece feeding. As mentioned before, always use the blade guard, riving knife, and anti-kickback device for every cutting operation where the blade will fully cut through the workpiece. Make sure the saw blade is not contacting the guard, riving knife, or the workpiece before the switch is turned on. Always use the appropriate saw blade for the riving knife. Never cut freehand. Use the rip fence for rip cuts and the miter gauge for cross cuts and miter cuts, but don't use them together. Unsupported or improperly supported workpieces may twist or bind, causing kickback or unexpected movements of the workpiece. The miter gauge and the rip fence should never be used together. They can act against each other and bind against the saw blade and cause kickback. Never use the rip fence as a length guide for repeated cross cutting. Use a miter gauge or stop block to provide safe workpiece clearance. Start and finish the cut from the operator side of the table saw. Always push, never pull the workpiece through the blade. Never feed material from the back of the saw. Do not release the workpiece until it has been pushed completely past the saw blade. Never reach behind or over the saw blade while it is spinning. If kickback occurs, your hands could be drawn into the blade. When the cut is finished, turn the saw off and let the blade stop spinning before attempting to remove cutoffs, scrap, or the workpiece from the table. A coasting blade still contains a lot of energy and can cause a serious injury. A table saw is intended to cut wood, wood-like, or plastic materials. You can cut through the workpiece or cut partially through and make a non-through cut. There are two basic types of through cuts, cross cuts and rip cuts. When cross cutting, you are cutting the wood across the grain. This cut is performed with the blade elevated a bit higher than the thickness of the workpiece using the miter gauge. Hold the edge of the workpiece firmly against the miter gauge. Then, slowly push it forward through the blade. Never use the rip fence as a stop or length gauge. If the workpiece is too small to be safely supported by the miter gauge, use a wood facing attached to the miter gauge or some other cross-cutting jig or fixture. In order to keep your fingers away from the blade, the workpiece must be clamped to the miter gauge. Miter cuts are cross cuts cut at an angle other than 90 degrees. The miter gauge is set for the desired angle and the cut is made in the same fashion as a cross cut. Rip sawing is cutting with the grain of the wood or down the length of the workpiece. 
Again, the blade is elevated to a height just above the thickness of the workpiece, but this time the rip fence is used to control the width of the cut. Make sure the rip fence is parallel to the blade and securely locked in place. When ripping, you should apply the feed force to the portion of the workpiece between the saw blade and the rip fence. Use one hand to push the workpiece forward and one hand to hold the workpiece against the fence. Never push the workpiece into the side of the blade. This can result in the workpiece binding and kicking back. Follow the instruction manual noting safe distance from the blade. A special type of rip cut is a bevel rip cut. When performing a bevel rip cut, always place the fence to the side opposite of the blade tilt. Bevel ripping with the guard tilted toward the fence may not allow the use of the push stick and will wedge the workpiece between the blade and the fence. On this particular table saw, the blade tilts to the right just as you would with straight rip cuts, you should apply the feed force to the portion of the workpiece between the saw blade and the rip fence. Use one hand to push the workpiece forward and one hand to hold the workpiece against the fence. Never rip cut a workpiece that is twisted, warped, or does not have a straight edge. Otherwise, the workpiece may wedge between the blade and the fence and possibly cause kickback. Always position the push stick and apply feed force parallel to the saw blade. Ensure that the push stick is positioned such that surface A is flat against the top of the workpiece and surface B is fully engaged with the trailing end of the workpiece. When ripping widths between two to six inches, a push stick should be used. When the width is less than two inches, a push stick may interfere with the guard so an auxiliary fence and push block for ripping should be used. Remember, if your hand or fingers are within six inches of the blade, you are too close to be able to react in the event of kickback and you may be injured. There are other types of cuts that can be performed on some benchtop and contractor table saws. These cuts may include non-through cuts, such as dados, grooving, rabbits, and plunge cuts. These cuts may require different blades and table inserts and generally must be performed without the blade guard in place. To determine if these types of cuts are allowed on your table saw model, consult your instruction manual. Ongoing continued safe operation of a table saw also depends on proper maintenance. The instruction manual details the user's serviceable and maintainable parts. If the saw is in need of repair, have it serviced by qualified repair personnel using the proper replacement parts. Well, that's it for this introduction to safely using table saws. Remember, always read and follow the instructions, warnings, and safety rules that came with the saw. Always keep them for reference whenever you have any questions. Table saws can be useful power tools, whether in the home workshop or on the job site. When used and maintained as directed by the manufacturer, they can deliver years of safe performance. Other safety videos and literature are available from the Power Tool Institute please visit our website at www.powertoolinstitute.com for more information. Here's wishing you safe operation of all your power tools and great success in all your jobs or projects. Thanks for watching.